Hello and welcome to another video from Paraplayers. In this airsoft video, I'm going to be showing you all the kit, all the equipment, all the gadgets, and everything that I've actually bought for my journey into airsoft. Quite a few people on my channel were asking me, how much does this cost? How much does that cost? How much does it cost to actually play airsoft? So I decided I'd film all my kit and we can go through and have a look on what I purchased and how much it costs. Now, of course, these prices are going to be reflective on what you actually buy and where you go to buy them. But let's jump in and have a look and we'll start off with the tack vest. Now, there are hundreds of different types of tack vests or tactical vests or plate carriers. You can even get these just purely as an ammo carrier, but I decided I quite like this. It has lots of pouches on the front, which means you can get all your mags in there. It also has a really secure Velcro system. There's actually one that ties around your waist underneath the belt, and then the Velcro straps on the side connect under the main patches. It really is quite a really nice snug thing, and it feels like you've got a piece of solid kit when you're actually wearing it. Lots of ability to upgrade and move things around in here because it has got the molly system so you can literally put what you want in here any place on this vest. Lots of places for BBs, extra magazines, medical aid, you name it, it can all go in this vest. This is the back of the tack vest or the plate carrier, whichever way you want to call this. And as you can see, it's got the full molly system on there, so you can move all the things around on here wherever you want them. This bag on the back is actually for the radio, something I wasn't quite aware of, but there you go. Some of the lads in the military actually told me what it was. Next up, we have the Peak Design GoPro mount. Of course, this is not actually really necessary for airsofting, but if you want to document the journey like I do and work your way through with the GoPro, this is a mount that will allow you to go on the chest rig or any strap, basically, horizontally and vertically move the GoPro. So something you might want to consider if you want to start documenting your games. So here we are, the meat and potatoes of the stuff or the kit that you're actually going to want. This is kind of like the real basic stuff. Of course, you're going to need a rifle bag. One with as many pockets as possible is always going to be better for the amount of things that you actually have to take. And as you can see, we've got all sorts down here. BBs, gloves, belts, slings, lipo chargers, extra batteries and magazines and things like that. So let's jump in and I shall tell you a little bit more about these. So first up, BB you're gonna want to get yourself a good quality BB and you're probably gonna want to ask around for the best weight to get as I'm running DMR at 400 FPS 0.28 are actually the best one for me for that range to keep me safe when dealing with the chrono so that's something for you to take into mind of course you're gonna want extra tools you're gonna want also a decent pair of gloves these are strike systems gloves and they've actually got a Kevlar knuckle so it stops you getting twatted on the knuckle when you've got four grips and things like that at the bottom you can see we have a rifle sling this is a one-point sling meaning you can let go of the weapon when you're not firing it and it will rest in front of you and it gives you enough removability to be able to lift the weapon up a good quality army belt is gonna is so oh I can't explain how much better it is to wear a decent belt, especially when you've got a sidearm attached to it. It really does help. Here we have a lipo battery charging bag, which is where your lipo goes when it's charging, because if you overcharge them, they can explode. So I put that in there and I also write a checklist for all the gear for when I go and come back. And here is the little lipo charger. Now, if you're going to get one of these, get some advice on the correct battery for your rifle and also the settings and the proper charger. It'll make life so much easier. There's also a switch on there to change it from LiPo to other settings. An extra LiPo battery is going to be essential. Last thing you want when you're out for a game for seven, eight hours is to run out of battery. That's your game over. So here we have my M4 Octo Arms Amoeba Pro. This is the 15 inch barrel length one in a two tone mix, which I thought was a little bit nicer than just going for the pure black stock. This attachment here is actually part of the one amount sling system that you were looking at earlier. So you can literally just clip this in and then let go of the weapon. You can sling it over your shoulder, etc. Very, very handy. Up front here, you can see I've actually added a wrist Picatinny rail onto the side of this key mod because it comes with key mod on the side of this weapon and I've attached a GoPro mount. Again, not essential, but that's up to you. 
As we come further down, we've actually got some of these rubber mounts that I've mounted on the side of the weapon just to give it a nice rubbery feel. And when you bang your weapon on things, it's not going to knacker it. I've also got an uh, Oct Arms Tactical Key Mod FG 007 foregrip up top. I have a Vism sight. Now this has a four times red dot on it. It has a close quarters red dot on the other side and I also have a little cheap lens protector on there. And that's it. Apart from upgrading the spring, there's nothing else being modified. Next up we have some of the protective gear and one extra little Gucci part that I'm about to put on the M4 after I've done a little bit of adjusting. So let's jump in and have a look at what all this kit is and again how much all this stuff is going to cost and whether you actually need some of this stuff is entirely debatable, you can get bit by bit the more you play. And it also depends on whether you're playing indoors, close quarters or whether you're outdoors doing milsim and skirmishing. Now, if you've been watching my other video, you'll notice that I actually wore this. It's like a ninja balaclava with a predetermined sort of face pattern. I wear this just to stop my ears getting battered and the back of your head. And it gives you, it does give you a little bit of protection, although you can get a little bit hot, depending on how much stuff you're actually putting on your head. Now, again, I was talking about BBs. These are BBs, and as you can see, I've got my name on here because everybody puts their own stuff onto one table. Why not keep it simple? Now you want a good quality BB and you're probably going to want to ask a few airsofters rather than people in shops a bit of advice because they're going to tell you something different. Again, depending on how many you bring, just make sure you bring enough for the day. Now this is an elbow protector. This may be a little bit OTT depending on what you're doing. And again, I've got my name on here because everybody tends to wear a lot of the same kit. If it gets dropped, they can always bring it back to the marshals and say, I found this, it's got Lund's name on it. I tend to lay it on the floor because I'm doing the DMR roll. So it's always handy to have these. There are brushes, rocks, sticks poking out. Why not give yourself a little bit of extra protection? Now this is a knee pad. A little bit scuffed up the other one this is the new one and i just wear this on one knee on the right hand knee so depending on whether you're left or right handed you can put your knee down and rest it this is one of the first face protection masks that i bought that i'm actually not using anymore even though you can bend and mold these to your face and get yourself comfortable i do find that if i put this on i can't see down the site properly and this is something for you to consider it really is going to be a personal choice when it comes to your face protection Depending on how big the actual site is that you're playing on, for example, the one up at patrol base is quite small, you can walk back in five minutes, you're going to want to drink. Running around like a madman for 20 minutes, having a break, running around, running around, you'd be surprised how quickly you get hot, sweaty monster. You're going to want hydration. Now I've got this, but again this all adds up to the weight of you running around. This is the face mask that I've actually decided to use. It's a lot smaller, it just covers the nose, mouth and cheeks, and it gives you enough room in order to be able to put on your eye protection which of course is the most important part well actually eyes and teeth when it comes to airsoft but this is moldable and i really do like this next up we have a small bipod which is mounted on the bottom of the weapon now do you need this is it gucci sure it's, of course it's gucci it's hella gucci also adds to the weight of the weapon but if you want to go prone all the time and you want to rest your weapon and do a dmr or a sniper rifle or you want to rest it on something this is a brilliant little piece of kit it can be quite expensive and you can buy Chinese cheap crap off eBay but they break really quickly so if you pay a little bit more you really do get what you pay for Next up we have the Payday Mask, or it always reminds me of Payday, or one of those games, War of Two, whatever it was. And this is really just for skirmishing. I wouldn't wear this to go out and play uh, in the woods or anything like that. So if it's put up close and personal, you can wear these sort of fun things, but you must wear clear glasses underneath because the BBs shatter and you get dust and crap in your eyes. Next up we have a shamag which I just wrap around my neck just to stop you getting twatted and it looks like you've got love bites all over your neck. And of course if you've seen my previous video there are about 20 different ways to wear this. It looks cool and if you're playing on the Taliban or the Op4 side you can make yourself look like a right boss. Eye protection, the most important part of airsoft. Now the reason I chose these real military bully uh, impact glasses is because they are clear and I can get them on while still wearing the wire mesh and all the extra stuff on top. And they do have foam in here to stop you sweating and they will not fog but you can get water in there from condensation from you running around. There's a million different types of masks but make sure you spend some decent moolah on your eye protection. Eyes and teeth, that's all that matters. If you get shot in the knackers, 
doesn't matter. But please make sure you spend some decent money on some decent eye protection. Next up, we have a first aid pack. Well, what do you want that for? You're not in the real military. No one's going to get injured. You would be surprised. I have seen people with bust lips, split ears. You can fall over if you haven't got the proper protection on. You can split your elbow open. As I said, that's why I wear sometimes the elbow pads. I've seen people with grazes and cuts because there's, there's branches around and things like that. So I've got scissors and bandages and plasters in there. That's literally all in there. Now, your magazines, get yourself some decent mags. This is a mid cap, which means it holds around 150 bbs and it also looks cool with the rounds through the glass now the benefit to these is that you don't need to wind the spring on the bottom and as you can see that means it's empty with the last one in there last thing you want is to be running out of rounds when you're firing pop 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 and having to do the spring at the bottom it's so frustrating i also carry in my vest a speed loader and again my name's on all these things and I'm going to be adding tape to the mags as well. Put your BBs in there, then you flick it shut and you press the little button like a syringe. Pop, pop, pop. So much easier to get your BBs wherever you want to put them. And in order with this mag, we put it in the end, we click the clicker and there, lo and behold, we've got it full. So I've got at least four or five mags as well. Clothing, again, this is where the fun part of Airsoft comes in. If you want to be SAS, if you want to be Spetsnaz, if you just want to be a Russian infantry, German infantry, if you want to be special forces, if you want to be... The, you could be anything you want in Airsoft. Live out all your Milsim fantasies. So for me, I'm going to go for a bit of the PMC, private military contractor. So I don't really... I'm not tied into a specific kit. I've actually got my main jacket and trousers coming in a week or two, which I've just ordered. But get yourself a decent baseball cap, protects your forehead, keeps the sun out of your eyes, and it really is invaluable when you're running around in the woods and the sun's blinding you. Now, these are my Solomon GTX 4Ds. I actually got these for my other YouTube channel where I have a hiking channel. Love hiking up in the dales and single tracking, and these boots are absolutely fantastic. The military actually use Solomon boots in America. They are slightly slightly different coloured, they are the sandy coloured, but they're exactly the same boot. You're going to want ankle protection when you're running around in the woods. It's all elevated up and down and it's uneven and rocky, so going over on your ankle is going to be the worst thing. Go, pay £25 to play, go over on your ankle, that is your day over. Now this jacket, believe it or not, I bought this jacket about 10 years ago off the high street. And it's actually a trendy jacket. Yes, I, I loved all this sort of camo stuff before all the, the wankers, shall we say, the trendies started wearing combat trousers and everything else because I was a, into deathcore and metal. I've had all this sort of clothes for years, but this was a trendy jacket that I quite liked and it was smart back then. So you don't actually have to spend a lot of money on all the official gear. And I know a couple of friends who've spent 15 grand. Yeah, you heard me. 15 grand because he bought all the proper military gear. You don't need to spend that. Just wear what you think feels comfortable. The good thing about the Airsoft community is nobody judges anybody. You can turn up in a in shorts and a t-shirt if you wanted. You could come on the, on the field with a cod piece. You can wear whatever you want to wear. Nobody will judge you because we're all there for the fun of it. All want to run around and shoot people with real realistic looking military guns so I hope this has been of a little bit of an insight in you don't spend the amount of money you think you're gonna have to but then again as you can see from this video it can be a little bit expensive to actually get into the sport now these trousers are montane and I got these from go outdoors they're actually hiking trousers they're really strong you can open them up when they get too hot they're also completely waterproof so laying on the floor you're gonna have no problems whatsoever so I shall update this video with the clothing once I've actually got the rest of the stuff so now that you've been through and seen some of the gear that I've got, and I'm sure there are many airsofters out there going, God, that's nothing. By the time you get into the sport and you really start enjoying it, there's all the extra weapons for close quarters if you want to do skirmish. And then if you want to be long range, you've got your marksman, your sniper, your saw gunner. But this is just the basic kit that I've got to actually start getting into this. And I have played a few times on skirmishing and I have done some stuff up at the Yorkshire Paintball uh, with patrol base. And I've got some more matches already organized for a little bit more on the mill sim side but i'm getting there very slowly i don't want to jump too too quickly into that aspect of it need to get to learn the sport a little bit more 
and personally for me get used to the range on these you know from firing real rifles and and um, I was in a 2-2 rounds uh, club and then I did a competition shooting and I did biathlons triathlon all this sort of stuff so the range on it you're going to have to get used to there are occasions when you can stand there looking at somebody 50 metres away and think well they can't hit me with that arcing it up in the air and you just see the BBs coming in and move so I really wish we could fire further, but that's the sport and we're just going to have to get used to it. I hope you enjoyed this video and this little look at just some of the kit that I've bought. And I'm going to add it all up on screen now for you and give you an idea of what I've actually spent. I, I'm, I'm scared to do the video myself <laughs> to have a look, but that's it. Now I've got the kit. It really is just getting the extra little bits that you want now just to gucci yourself up. It's not essential. And your average day of going out and playing airsoft is £25, which can be, sounds quite a lot, but if you're out for six hours, you do the math. Obviously, you're paying for the site, you're paying um, for the marshals who are there to look after you and make sure everything's fair. There's the chrono team and everybody else. So it's actually not that expensive once you've got the kit. Remember, the travelling expenses and fuel and food and all the rest of the gubbins on top. But so let's, I'll leave the sum, the final total on screen. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this. I am considering not doing any more game videos, as in PC game videos. I'm just going to do video blogging and airsoft and things I find of interest. So let me know your thoughts on that as well. But in the meantime, I've been Paraplayers, and this has been my airsoft kit and how much it costs for you as a new player to get in. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.